Hey everybody and welcome back to the Techmoto channel and the electronics playlist. Today we're going to be looking at these little gadgets. These are relays and I've got a few different types here to show you. Um, we're going to talk about what they are, how they work, we're going to drop them into a breadboard so we can see them function and then you guys can go away and use them in your own project. Now I'm going to throw a few graphics up on the screen so you can see what I mean. Um, but effectively the electromagnets at this end and the switch is at this end. This relay only has one switch in it. Um, but if we take a 9 volt battery, um, this is actually a 12 volt relay, but I know that it works with a, uh, a 9 volt battery, and I put my power onto these pins, if you listen really carefully, and I be quiet for a little while, you'll be able to hear the click of the switch being uh, drawn across by the electromagnet. So just listen. So as I take the wire on and off, it pulls the switch towards it. Now, you'll notice that when I pull the wire away from it, so that's on, when I pull the wire away from it, it pulls it back, so it's sprung loaded. So when the power's there, the switch is on. When the power's not there, the switch is off. Now, for those of you that are over the age of, let's say, 30, you'll probably remember cars. When you put the indicator on, the cars would click. So it would go tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. And that was actually the relay turning itself on and off uh, for your indicator lights. Uh, nowadays, of course, it's all electronic and, and they have um, sounds in your cars to simulate that. But in the good old days, you'd have a, a bank of relays underneath your dashboard. And as the car was indicating, it would click on and off. OK, so let's connect this relay to the breadboard. So we've got two pins for our electromagnet and we've got two pins which are our switch. Uh, now, if you remember a previous video I did on breadboarding, there was a gap down the middle here. And of course, these holes there here are connected together. There's a gap, and then these holes here are connected together. And this is where this gap comes in useful, because I don't want to connect both of the pins of our electromagnet together when I put them on the breadboard. So I'm bridging the gap across here with the relay. And that means that the uh, pins that are going to either side of my electromagnet are not connected together. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my positive wire and put it into uh, one of the pins of the electromagnet. And if I put this down on the table and I just plug the negative into the other side, I should be able to hear it click. So that's the electromagnet uh, switching the switch for me. Uh, so I know that that works. Next thing I want to do is wire up some sort of circuit. So I'm going to take a resistor and I'm going to plug the resistor into my positive power because I want to run a, a an LED off this and I'm going to run that into one side of my switch uh, like so and then I'm going to take the other side of my switch through an LED to a random space on the breadboard like that so what we've got is the positive power coming up here into the relay it's also coming up here going through the relay uh, through, it's through the resistor through the switch up the LED and then down to this spot here. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to run a wire from my LED up to where I'm going to connect the negative to the other side of the relay. So if I take my black wire now and I plug it in, it turns that LED on. But what's important is that the power that's going through my relay is a separate circuit to the LED. Now, I'm going to show you that with another battery. Okay, so we know that that works now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire out, I'm going to take that out, I'm going to take that out, and I'm just going to turn off my relay for a moment. So my one PP3 battery is just going to run my relay like so. I've got a second battery here, and I'm going to run the positive into uh, the one terminal of the switch, like so. And then I'm going to run my resistor from the other pin of my switch to a random space over here. And then I'm going to run my resistor, uh, my diode from my resistor to a random space over there. And then I'm going to plug my power into there. OK, so think of it like this. That's one half of the circuit. That's the other half of the circuit. Here's the switch. That's my electromagnet. So if I plug this in, it turns on. Now. That battery and that battery are not connected in any single way. The only way that these two halves of the circuit are connected together are through that electromagnet here 
pulling that switch across. There's no current flowing between the two, which is really interesting. So there we go. Okay, let's have a look at this one. This is a slightly different relay. You'll notice it's a little bit bigger and it's got a few more pins on the bottom of it. Um, this one is a 12 volt coil, but it's a 250 volt AC switch, which means that I need 12 volts to operate the electromagnet, but I can actually pass 250 volts through the switches themselves. So I could use this in mains electricity if I wanted to. You'll notice that it's got slightly more pins um, th than the other one, uh, but the electromagnet pins are still spaced away from the rest of the pins. So you can see quite clearly that these are the ones that go to the electromagnet. It doesn't really matter which way round you get the power on that, it'll still work. On this side we've got two switches. This is a double pole, double throw relay. and We've got one switch on this side with three pins and one switch on this side with three pins. Now one of those is going to be the pole and the other two are going to be the throw and on the other side one of those is going to be the pole and the other two are going to be the throw. Now different relays um, are wired in different ways but I happen to know that this one the middle uh, pin is the pole and the one either side of it is the throw so that's the one that's going to be connected to the power and then as it switches it's going to be going to this one and as it switches off it'll go to this one and as it switches on it'll go to this one. So let's wire it up in our breadboard. So we'll stick it across the middle of the breadboard like we did with the last one and it's always a good idea just to lean the relay off to one side so you can see uh, where all the pins are uh, so you're not missing the pins. So we'll put our positive in there and just test it and make sure it works. Yes it's clicking away um, and then what we're going to do is use our other battery just as we did in the other example lean the relay off to one side so we can see where the pins are and I'm going to put my positive to the middle pin and then I'm going to take a resistor from one of the throws to a random spot over here like so and then I'm going to take one of my other resistors and I'm going to take it from the other throw to a random spot over there like so and then I can push my relay in all the way. Take a uh, light emitting diode and put the positive nearest the resistor and then the negative into the negative power rail and then the positive into the resistor and the shorter one into the negative power rail and then if I wire this up one of those switches is going to be on. So at the moment the switch is in this position this light is on. If I give power to the electromagnet it throws the switch to the other position so this light can come on. If I take it away that one comes on, if I put it back, that one comes on and you can do that for ages. It's quite good fun. Now that's just one switch on one side. So I can wire up the other side in exactly the same way. So one way it's switched, the other way it's switched. Dependent on the needs of your circuit or your design, you can use it in any way that you like. Um, but as I say, be careful because the writing on the top of here tells you uh, how much power you need to run the coil. As I say this is a 12 volt, I'm using a 9 volt battery uh, which I know works. You can get 5 volt relays, you, I mean you can get just hundreds and thousands of different types. Okay as I mentioned you can get quite a few different types. Um, you can get surface mount relays, you can get large relays, you can get small relays, but this is an interesting one. This one has uh, two more pins uh, than we've seen so far. Uh, it's got our double pole, double throw um, switches either side, so we've got three pins here and three pins on this side. But the coil this time has four pins. Now this is a latching relay, which means that if you put power to two of those pins it will turn on, but when you take the power away it stays in that position. To make it switch back again you have to put power to the other two pins and it will switch back. To switch it back again, these two pins, and so on and so forth. So we're going to put this in our breadboard and wire it up. Now this is going to be slightly more complex. I've bent the pins, so let's just bend those back again. Slightly more complex than the other relays we've used so far, but I'm going to put it in so it's tilted up so that I can see where all the pins are. I'm going to take my positive and I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to take my negative and I'm going to put it in here. And if you listen, it will click if I put it in the right hole. Okay, it's not going to click because it's in the other position. So I'll just move it to the other set of pins, switch it back. Hear that click? 
I have to move my power to the other set of pins to switch it back again, move it to the other set of pins and it switches again. But you'll see that with this one, no matter how many times I put it in and out of that hole, it's not going to switch back until the power runs across those other two pins. But it runs in exactly the same way. The pole and the throws on this one, I believe, are slightly different. So the pole is the one closest to the coil. We will find out if I'm right or wrong. I haven't tested this. I'm just going on past experience, which might be a disaster. Um, but we'll try it out. So we'll do exactly the same thing as we did before with our resistors and our LEDs. So we'll wire those up to the negative power rail there like that. And we'll take our power to the pole, which I believe is the one closest to the coil. And we'll run that to our negative. Now, luckily one of them's come on. So got power into uh, two of the pins of the coil. I'm going to move both the positive and the negative over to the coil pins below and it switches that one. And now I can take the battery out completely and it'll stay on. So that is switched, it's latched. If I want to turn it back, I've got to put power into the other pins, take the power away, it's latched. And you can do that many, many times. Now this might be useful for a particular design, uh, but depending on what you're doing, you'll just have to choose the relay that's the best um, for your application. Now a word of warning, because this little gadget uses um, an electromagnet it does draw quite a considerable amount of current. Now not a huge amount but if you've got a, a cheap battery like this it's not going to last very long with one of these. Uh, the beauty of using a relay is that you have that um, uh, two circuit connection so your coil, this battery, this circuit, whatever this circuit is that's controlling the switching mechanism is not connected to this one over here. So I could use a large voltage over here to run my house mains or um, I don't know, a winch on my car or something, like that. something that's drawing a huge amount of power, but I could switch it with a very small circuit with a little battery without any real concern. It's used um, for things um, like uh, high power electricity where you don't really want people getting too close to um, a huge amount of current. So you have all the connections that, that carry a huge amount of current behind some sort of shield and the control system that somebody's using to control it is run off a smaller voltage. Uh, but that's a relay. It's a switch powered by an electromagnet which draws the switch over um, Pretty easy, really. I mean, that's all there is to it.